Hi friends, my name is Sin Lagos and this is Your Artist Speaking. This is a series of conversations with visual creator Sin Lagos. That's me. Discussing the techniques and current culture of the creative industry, all the while navigating my own artistic identity. to another podcast. My name is Sin Lagos and this is Your Artist Speaking. Today is going to be a very uh, interesting topic. I'm actually going to be talking about the new release of Adobe's generative art tool, which is called a really cool name, Firefly. So if you haven't heard of it yet, it's been a very interesting uh, few hours to say the least. I have been able to kind of have a bit of an insider within the the group that developed this program and it's been an exciting time. A lot of hush-hush communications, but it's honestly been very intriguing for me. As you may know, I primarily focus on photography, graphic design, and at the moment film, which is a very interesting new venture of mine. Of course, I've never really been able to just sort of uh, stay put within the square boxes that we are given in this industry, right? Are you this? Are you that? I've often sort of drawn outside the lines and found myself exploring different mediums. As a result, I have been very intrigued by this new era of immersive technology and just this completely new developments of AI-generated art and work, which, um, to be fair, I dare say is an absolutely uh, brand, brand spanking new. If you have already used the Adobe Creative Cloud, After Effects, Adobe Photoshop, you probably find that there's a lot of instantaneous effects that already exist, whether you're rotoscoping or you are expanding your image with brand new uh, content aware tools, uh, things like that. Those are all generated by uh, an element that they call Adobe Sensei. And Adobe Sensei essentially is an AI tool that um, thinks for you and it makes all of these things possible. So coming from a very, very long line of graphic designers that may be began as long as I have, which is over 10 years now, um, I, would, I would dare say that we, we have never experienced something like this before. A lot of the work that we had to do, even within the Adobe Creative Cloud, was often very much manual, right? If we wanted to remove an element, we had to uh, discern which similar pixels were going to be the best fit for this magical effect to take place. So it wasn't as easy as I, I now have it. Like even within my phone, I'm able to find these content aware tools that are able to think for me. And they have this uh, smart technology that is essentially machine learning. It is able to discern the photography for you, the photo for you, the video for you. And it's able to select spaces that um, will meet your request, right? And just remove things or bring things to focus. Quick pause for thought. Consider how many ways you've already interacted with a machine learning tool that has enabled you to create your creative work. Pause about it. So it's been an incredible journey for me to find the industry is now delving into this space to a point to the space of, of uh, generative art to a point where everyone is talking about it everyone is talking about it and i think the part that is so compelling for most as it is very much for me too is the instantaneous factor of it all uh i think it's what i like to call the um almost like the McDonald's effect, right? Like uh, you can have it right here, right now, and it will be fast. And it's 
pretty exciting um, when you think about it from that point of view. However, I say that with a little bit of, um, I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm a little bit on the side of all of the artists that I, I have to advocate for all of the artists. I just can't help myself. Um, and so I, I, I'm a bit withholding on the excitement and thrill of this new era because I, with a full heart, hope that artists are kept in mind. Um, I hope that we are still able to create from our brains and our hearts and you know, our environments still influence our ideas and concepts. I hope that we don't get everything from within this machine, but rather it's a combination of things, right? Uh, at least that's been my process all this time. It has been a interesting unit of collecting inspiration from my environment and also uh, daring to uh, express myself through technological tools as they continue to change uh, within my industry, within this visual industry. And so it's been a very intriguing uh, point of view to sort of look at it from this this dual point of view. On one end, I'm thrilled and excited that technology is ever evolving because I'm forever curious at, at what pace we do this in, where we're going to go next. I mean, I lived through the time when phones were handed to us and we were told there was also a camera. We were told we could communicate with our friends but we can also record things and we could also publish things and connect with someone across the world via the social platforms and endless amount of apps. I lived through that time. And now it feels like we're entering yet another era of wild new beginnings, right? And if we have learned anything throughout these past few years is that while new beginnings are kind of exciting and you know what we're pretty ready to embark into a new journey of excitement and positivity and hopefully um cool developments that don't get abused quick pause for thought i think among the skepticism there's always this opportunity to embrace something new in the frontier and I'm going to lean into that side of positivity and optimism because I've seen this industry change time and time again. And at some point, it does turn a new leaf. And maybe this is that point. Us about it. So I wanted to talk about Firefly because I've been able to take part in a group that has been able to give feedback to Adobe and be as honest as we could be about our experience with Firefly, as I'm sure you're going to be uh, as well, right? As you try to play with it now and become curious and it become experimental in your prompts. And so it has been a very interesting thing for me because coming from photography, film and graphic design, I think graphic design would be the closest to this uh, this tool, the closest connection, the closest thread to how I can use, I, my question has always been, how can I use this in my current workflow? How can I continue to manifest the ideas that I have while using this as a tool? Not using it as an easy shortcut, not using it as a simple uh, sort of uh, skipping the line sort of uh, uh, tool, right? There are ways that it is fair to use tools to be able to uh, get to a place, get to an idea a little bit faster. However, I don't want to rob, rob myself from the workflow that does nurture my brain to think creatively to begin with, right? I don't think anybody really wants that. So I approached this when it was given to me um, as an insider, I approached it as something that I could use as an external tool. 
So added, I, I added this to my arsenal of tools. So think of it as you're adding this the way you would add a camera into your tools, the way you would add a mic, the way you would add a phone, uh, a light, right? So this is just a brand new tool. And what's cool about this tool as well is that it's completely different from anything else you've ever had. So as they continue to develop this uh, tool, which they surely will be, uh, I am curious to see all the different ways that uh, all the pieces can play a role in a bigger project of mine. I am curious to see where my mind goes when I start to consider generative art as a tool within my project workflow. I'm really curious about how my mind begins to develop as I consider or understand that this is something that I can use. Because I'll tell you, even now, after a few hours of using it the first time, I remember constantly looking around and recognizing that everything that is in front of me, although real, analog, and organic, I can touch it, I can smell it, I can feel it, right? Still had, I couldn't help but feel, my brain was still in that world of generative art. Quick pause for thought. I want you to consider how you can begin to use this as a tool within your workflow, not only because it is going to function directly with the work that you're already creating, but also because it's going to help you think in a different way. Consider a world of new possibilities, of new trains of thoughts, of new neuron connections. Think about that first time that you saw an iPhone. Do you remember that? I remember it. It felt brand new. And I think that in itself is worth pursuing. Experiencing emerging technology can be interesting. And I think it's up to us to discern whether we keep it in our workflows or not. Pause about it the different ways that the machine learned what a computer is, what a table is, what a, what a word that is expressive, for example, when I say the word cute, can it, can it express cute? Can it express imaginative? Can it express, you know, sad and solemn? Can it express all of those things that I, believe are human innate and I put it to a test and man I, I found a lot of different outlets that uh maybe some were wrong turns I did not enjoy the result I think there's a lot of development still to be had within Firefly but then in other spaces and, and those would be specifically anything to do with like uh, faces or recognizing expressions, humans, I think that element is still in the works. And I mean, can you imagine trying to put, create a database for something that we already are fighting, literally protesting, that we don't want to be um, mis, misnamed, mis, uh, race, mis, I don't even th think those are the right terms, but just we don't want to be misclassified or classified in such a way that it constrains us from being more than just those terms in a database. And that, and yet that is the quest of machine learning. It's supposed to learn from a data and from a list of things that we have quantified as this is a human, this is a happy human, this is a a person of a certain ethnicity, this is a person of a certain gender. So undoubtedly, there's going to be a degree of bias within all of that, which I am curious to see how they uh, autocorrect and how they troubleshoot because it is still in its in infant phase of it all. So I do imagine those things are going to be uh, quite fickle until they get better, right? So I found myself instead in spaces like 
I've always wanted to be a degree of an architect. I've always wanted to be a person who can develop, uh, create an interior space or uh, develop a new product. I've always been very uh, intrigued and aware about architecture as you probably have seen in some of my photography where um, I just very much focused in and honed in on developing architecture photography. Uh, and hospitality photography because I just found it so intriguing. It's something that really calls to me. And so I started to delve into that space and I found myself developing ordinary places and ordinary spaces that I wanted to reinvent and reimagine with the power of generative art. And I began to develop my skill sets in prompts would have thought if you're a good writer you're going to just rock it in this space because you start to really hone in on the details of how you request a certain imagery so i was working with text to images and it has been a very very beautiful space of possibilities so i wanted to consider what it would be like to see a kitchen of the future a studio of the future, right? A studio space where you work, where artists work, a living room of the future, ordinary spaces that I interact with on a daily basis. And I wanted it to be as much my decision as I could I could within the, the things that I'm able to prompt. So I wanted to manifest a space that was particularly a color that was not ordinary. So have you seen a pink kitchen of the future? Have you seen a yellow living room? A bright yellow living room. Have you seen <laughs> have you seen the classroom of the future taught by potentially a singular mentor? I just started to really delve into the imagination element of all of this and I loved it. I think what it did in in the ways that it tickled my brain, what it did to my brain, I really enjoyed it. And so I think I encourage anybody, any creator that's in whatever craft or whatever medium to jump in, take a dive and wander in this space and find your own rhythm. Uh, take a peek. I think there's nothing to fear on that end. What I am really proud of in this entire journey has been that Adobe is taking a big, big, big uh, role in respecting the artist. And that is a very important element in the production of Firefly. So I hope that they still continue to keep that as a bullseye throughout this entire development because it's, it's, primal to creating anything. It's that human element that knows how to discern the life experience into something beautiful and visual. And I think our future is bright. So with that, I leave you and thank you for listening. And I'll see you on the other side.